Good day to you guys, CG Patrick here again and today I am going to be showing you how to create this DNA transformation effect in Blender EV. First, we are going to be modeling our simple object and using few set of modifiers, we are going to turn this into something like this. And of course, I am going to be showing you how to create this effect using procedural nodes. A quick note though, this is not an entirely step-by-step -step tutorial. I'm assuming that you already have an idea on how to work in Blender. So before we start, I would like you to know that I have an Instagram. There, I am posting my recent artwork and some of my future tutorial. So if you want to follow me there, I will appreciate that. So without further ado, let's go and start the tutorial. So in our modeling part here, I'm just going to delete everything and I'm going to start with a cylinder here in a cylinder option here. I'm just going to set the fill type to nothing. And while I am modeling this, I am going to be only modeling in this area because later we are going to mirror that in X axis and Y axis. So let's just go ahead and model our base shape for now. So this is our base shape, it's a T-shape, but don't forget to add a plenty of edge loop there because this is going to be helpful later when we add our simple deform modifier. Now this is a perfect time to add our set of modifiers, so let's go ahead here in our modifiers properties. And the first modifier that we are going to use is the mirror modifier. And let's check the Y-axis also and enable the clipping. The next modifier will be the array modifier. Now instead of x-axis here, we want it to be in y direction. So let's zero out x here and set the y to 1. And don't forget to enable the merge here, okay? And the last modifier will be the simple deform modifier. Now it looks like this. We don't want that. So let's just set this to Y. And in the form angle here, let's set that to 360 like this. All right. Now in array modifier here, let's set the count to about 9. Now this is our simple DNA shape. Now we are going to duplicate this. So basically, we have two DNA. The one will be the basic and the other one will be the futuristic one. So go ahead and duplicate this. And don't forget to rename them. In this case, I want to rename this to DNA1 and the other one, of course. For now, I'm just going to hide the DNA2. And let's just disable these modifiers for now so we could work on our details. So here, I'm just going to extrude this part right here and here. Just a pretty basic modeling. So I'm just going to speed up the video from here. Next, I'm going to add a secondary detail here and here, just like this. And also maybe here. So let's just go ahead and do that. Now, after a few, I came up with this type of design, nothing really complex. I just applied my basic modeling skills. Next, let's finally add our material here and our effects. But first, I'm just going to re-enable our modifiers here. And just like that, it looks really nice. And of course, our DNA too. Let's re-enable that. And if you see our object here like this, just go to edit mode and just scale this along y-axis and here. That will fix that. And after that, let's go ahead and switch to Material Preview. And in our render settings here, let's enable ambient occlusion and set the distance to 1 and the factor to 3. Enable the bloom, screen space reflection, and under color management here, change the look to very high contrast. And from here, let's go ahead and change to shading tab here. Now we are ready to start applying our material effects here. So let's just create new material here. 
click new I, I'm just gonna rename this to DNA one material now let's go ahead and start adding our nodes here so let's disconnect this BSDF material for now and place it here we are going to use that later and let's start adding the following node first one will be the mix shader a transparent BSDF node and let's connect the mix shader here the transparent BSDF on the top of the mix shader and now let's connect the principal BSDF here for now and now I'm going to add another set of node here shift A a color ramp node a noise texture and if you have the node wrangler enabled just control T to bring in the mapping node and in the texture coordinate here I'm gonna switch this to object and in the noise texture let's switch this to 4D and instead of vector I'm just gonna plug this here and the noise texture color of course in the color ramp factor and color ramp to the mix shader factor now let's drag this black handle all the way here and the white handle here and next let's enable our transparency option so press n in the keyboard go here where it says option and change the blend mode to alpha blend next i am going to add in a gradient texture now plug the mapping vector to the gradient texture and we are going to mix this with our noise texture together so let's bring in our mix rgb like this here and to see things better i'm just gonna go and change the settings of the principal bsdf i'm just gonna set this to color gray like this and increase the metallic of this and the roughness to about 0.2 now we see where this is going now let's add an empty in our viewport here and this is going to be our manipulator so we could control our effects so let's go back here in our texture coordinate here and under object let's select the empty and now if we select this and rotate this along z there you go now let's add an emission to this for additional effects so let's go back in our shading tab here and i am just gonna duplicate the mix shader and i am going to mix this principal bsdf with an emission shader and plug the principal bsdf to the bottom and emission to the top of the mix shader and since we need the same mapping data for that i'm just gonna connect the color ramp here in our mix factor and I'm just gonna change the color of this emission to blue something like this and change the strength to about 50 now if we test it there you go and of course you can change the appearance of this by scaling the empty like that without messing with our node setup now next let's go ahead and add in more color to our design so i'm just gonna go here and add in two more slots or two more material i'm gonna select this one and click new to add new material for that i'm gonna select the dna1 material and click this icon right here to duplicate that and i'm just gonna change this to color to color red like this and maybe change the settings of this just a bit and let's select the other one and we are going to do the same and let's select that dna1 material and duplicate that by clicking this icon right here and for this one i am just gonna delete the principal bsdl and duplicate this emission shader and plug this in here i'm going to change the color to something brighter blue like this now next i'm going to apply those material that we just created to our design i'm just gonna hide the dna2 for now and disable our modifiers so we can work better and also let's drag our empty control here so we can see it better what i'm going to do now is tap into edit mode and i'm going to select the faces and areas here that i think it's a good part where i can add separation to this and let's just go ahead and do that and after i'm done selecting those faces i'm just gonna go here I'm just going to select the material that we just created earlier and click assign. Now I'm just going to add the other emission shader that we created earlier. Now 
Now, after that, this is what I got. Now, let's enable back our modifiers here. And the DNA too. And also, let's add a material to this one very quick. Now, let's go ahead and animate our effects. So, I'm just going to drag this here and press I to insert keyframe to that. Let's select collocation. I'm going to drag this all the way to 100 and maybe change our end frame to 100 also. Now, at the frame 100, I'm just going to drag it here and rotate it along Z like this. So it adds a little bit of variation to it. And press I to insert keyframe to the location and rotation. Now let's test it. Nice. Okay, looking good so far. Now to help sell the effect more, I'm going to add a wave modifier to this. So let's go ahead and select our DNA one here and go to modifier tab, and I'm going to add a wave modifier. Here in the start position, I'm going to select the empty and I'm going to set the speed to 0.001 so it does not move at all. And I'm going to check the normals and bring down the narrowness to about 0.6. Now let's see what we got. Very nice. Now the following steps are it's up to you now as an artist. Be creative and don't forget to apply your own personality on it. And that's all about it guys. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you like it. I hope you learn a lot. If you do, please like, subscribe. If you have any comments, please put it down below. I will reply. And thank you for my subscribers for commenting and encouraging me for the kind words. I really, really appreciate that. I will continue on making more videos like this. And the visual effects tutorials are coming. Next will be the lightsaber. If you follow me on Instagram, I will post my future tutorial there so yeah that's it for now bye